I think maybe I should elaborate more about Freemasonry so that you know it's misconceptions and whatever it is in minds of yeah, people. Yeah, like what, what exactly do you all do? Yes. Yeah. yeah, how can you, you have religion? Hold on, before <laughs> let me tell you what we do. Let me explain. <laughs> first misconception that was mentioned by Raman yeah. we are not a oh. secret society oh. we are definitely not a secret society so yeah. are you all <coughs> part of the illuminati <laughs> that's, again there's another misconception <laughs> yes the answer is absolutely no okay uh-huh. we're not although there could be some kind of overlapping but frankly if you ask me about illuminati themselves mm. i do not know what we are trying to explain is the concept of birth and the importance of light freemason is teaching us perpetually two things understand what happens when you're born right mm-hmm. and accept the fact that you will die one yes. day we are asked one very pertinent question before you can be a mason mm. that do you believe in god Mm. and you must say yes right because we accept him as a creator in freemasonry language we call him the great architect of the universe or we call him the great geometrician of the universe right if you look at the way the alignment of the stars and all this uh, and, the, and the planets it's pure geometry yeah. mm. right now a lot of things that you you're saying i'm sure people are also thinking like this sounds like religion yeah mm. i was going to say it, it is not religion how uh-huh. can is death only applicable to muslims is no. death only applicable to christians is death only applicable to buddhists mm. no death will come to everybody was sir stanford refers a mason yes serious in freemasonry there's this thing called also promotions mm. okay. then you get district promotion mm. and grand promotion grand lodge promotion right. that kind of thing so that's what it, but once you are a virtual master you are known as a virtual brother you are listening to pen b podcast the opinions expressed and shared on this podcast are of our own welcome to pen b.sg stop this right here to play the next job sorry smile and i'm dharma and i am raman ha huh, thank you for uh, your new listenership for yes. those of you who have just discovered us mm-hmm. via the pofma we bid you welcome once again <laughs> <laughs> uh, yes i uh, just uh, to have like some numbers mm-hmm. in perspective mm-hmm. uh, the previous podcast got triple the amount of listeners yes uh thank you yeah <laughs> We welcome yeah, I, the new support, Che. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Ev- evidently, people love uh, controversy. Shit, like, yeah. And to add to the con- yes. controversy, controversy or conspiracy? Yes. Today we have a very interesting <coughs> guest. Yes. He's your one of your high net worth contacts, ah. Uh? Uh, he's a <laughs> no, practicing no, he's lawyer, <laughs> 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 and he's a good lawyer. He's yeah. uh, someone who I consider to be a friend. All right, yeah. uh, that's more important. Uh, yeah, no. I, I serve. Like, yeah. I serve with him in the uh, Muslim Law Committee. Fantastic. He's my chairman. Can ah. we just add a powerful friend? Uh, of course, yes, <laughs> because he is also a Freemason. What? Yeah, so, damn son. <laughs> So uh, often we've heard about people talking about masonry, Freemasons, mm. how this is some uh, secret society that nobody knows about. Mm. It's often been uh, conflated with Illuminati. It's yeah. like some, right. you know, what new world order that we don't know about. The Vinci Jay-Z. Code kind of yeah, stuff. Yeah, it's yeah. like so hidden zoom in to the me, sh- zoom to yeah. me. Yeah. It's like uh, entirely <laughs> hidden in the shadows and nobody knows much about it, right? Yes. So yeah. thankfully, uh, Aziz, um, we have with us Mr. Aziz Taibali, who is... Uh, a Freemason, and he's agreed to come on the show to 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 in, to shed light mm. on yeah. on this uh, society that we know very little of, and we are going to yeah. ask all the important questions. <laughs> So new, you know, you get to know more about this as well. It's not a secret, man. I mean, like, yeah, you're allowed to just go around saying, like, yeah, I'm 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 a Mason. Well, I'm glad it's sort of you raising this because the first misconception that was mentioned by Raman, yeah. we are not. I'll put a plural N O T. A oh. secret society. Oh. We are definitely not a secret society. Okay. Okay. Because if we were, seriously, you would be reading so much about us on the net. Mm. So that is something that's I think that absolute misconception must be that driven way. out of people's minds. Okay. okay. Totally. Yeah. Huh? Mm. And absolutely. So are you all <coughs> part of the Illuminati? <laughs> that's, again, that's another misconception. <laughs> yes. The answer is absolutely no. Okay, uh-huh. we're not. Although there could be some kind of overlapping, but frankly, if you ask me about Illuminati themselves, mm. I do not know, mm-hmm. so I can't tell you anything about them. But a lot of people sort of have uh, drawn, uh, the... you know, no, not a matter of drawn, but rather confused us with that. Yeah, know? and I mean, yeah. 
the, the preconceived <coughs> notions like when you hear illuminati when you hear freemason or whatever like immediately people are thinking of like strange people in ropes yes right yeah. like, in yeah. dark rooms and satanic rituals so yeah. one more one more um i was like uh, engaging our listeners prior to this interview okay and they they keep on mentioning this roth child roth what child. is this is this got to do with the No, no, no. Roth, just, just, no. Hold on. He may be a Mason. I do not know. Mm-hmm. I'm not sure. Okay. Okay. <clears throat> Because a lot of people are Masons, but we, you know, it's Rothschilds. We, I mean, like you're talking about Rothschilds. He's a Jew, you know. Mm. Yes. And surprisingly, let me now just. I mean, I don't want to go into first what his Freemasonry. Then I explain no. to you, lah. Uh, believe it or not, but when you talk about, you see. English lodges, we go back to what is called the United Grand Lodge of England. Okay. okay. Which headquartered in London. Mm-hmm. The year, it goes back to 1717. Wow. Although, of course, actually something like later, but 1717, and then there's a merger of certain lodges, I mean, the Grand Lodges, they call it, you know, and it formed. Mm-hmm. Now, so, my lodge, basically, is, we call it the English Constitution. I belong to this lodge called the Zedlin in the East Lodge. I'll give you more details about that later. <coughs> nice. Yeah. Zedlin of the East Lodge. No, Zedlin in, in the East Lodge. The ah, Zedlin in the East Lodge, number 508, Damn. English Constitution. So it's Ooh. E dot C. Wow. Now, basically, <clears throat> just to let you know, when the, the United Grand Lodge was formed, and then of course, Masons also, was, you know, people are brought in as Masons, huh? <laughs> Surprisingly, you know, Jews came in much later. Mm-hmm. Why? I don't know. Okay. But there were others like, you know, the English, I mean, it could be say Church of England or whoever, you know, that kind of thing, right? But the Jews were later. And then, lo and behold, actually, just about, it could be just, I don't know when, but it was in the 1700 something, huh? Okay. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Already there was a Muslim member of the lodge in India. Wow. Remember okay. the oh. Brits who were in India? Mm. Yes. After the Mughals. Okay. Mm-hmm. Now this guy was a Nawab of the, you know, I can't remember which particular state, mm-hmm. but because of the trading that he was doing with the Brits, uh-huh. he was brought in as a Mason. So we've had a Muslim Mason since 17 something, you know? Wow. Mm. Okay. Ooh. Now, so now, okay. I think maybe I should elaborate more about Freemasonry so that, you know, it's misconceptions and whatever it is in minds of yeah, people. Like what, what exactly do you all do? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. How can you, you know, have religion? Hold on. Before <laughs> we tell you what we do, let me explain. You see, when you think of the word Mason, what yeah. comes to mind? The Masonists are people who deal with bricklaying, walls. Correct. Hmm. So, you see, I think he's answered it right. Hmm. So basically, you must remember Masons of the years before, mm-hmm. what did they use? A 24-inch gauge. Okay. Mm. The compass. Yes. Mm-hmm. Huh? All tools. The square. Yes. Yeah. The pencil to delineate. Mm. It's all in the logo, right? The, the... We use these implements today in modern um, language, huh? in relation to our lives. Mm. Okay. What does a 24-inch gauge represent? 24 hours in a day. Okay. Oh. Eight hours to rest, mm. eight hours to work, mm. eight hours to do what you can do, good for your own kind and for your fellow mankind. Tell that to Rahman. Because for him, it's more of 12 hours for work, four hours for sleep, and then well, eight I hours mean, I'm what? talking about an average person. <laughs> <laughs> If you can work 14 hours for that matter, good for you, right? Yeah. So, I mean, a good example. Now, when you talk about a... When you talk about a compass kind of thing, mm. okay, you know, when you draw a circle, mm-hmm. it's a point of no return kind of thing, right? Yep. But it yes. starts somewhere, it ends somewhere. It's the same thing. Mm-hmm. Right. And that's what life is all about, you know? Mm-hmm. Okay. You think about it. So the square, proper lines, straight lines are drawn. Mm-hmm. The pencil is to delineate, you know, because in a sense, you must remember about deeds, huh? what we do will be recorded mm-hmm. what we don't do well uh, good in a sense also will be recorded okay. so all these are thing implements we apply to our lives you know so that's the first basic understanding of what it means by freemason but mm-hmm. we are speculative mm-hmm. we are free masons we call ourselves right right mm-hmm. so having that said that 
because we have this thing in our rituals that we have to explain the working tools okay. to a candidate when he's initiated, when he's passed, and when he's raised. Mm. Okay, now let me explain. Initiation of a candidate into Freemasonry, into any lodge, okay. whether you're belonging to an English lodge, mm. whether you're belonging to an Irish lodge, a Scottish lodge, or even say French in this case. Mm -hmm. Of course, like in India, they have the United Grand Lodge of India. Yeah. Uh -huh. They will follow certain principles, certain things, the work is similar. Okay. Okay. Like English lodges, of course, you can be found anywhere and everywhere. Like I recently came back from Tanzania. Mm. They've got the Eastern, the East Africa people, lodges are all following the United Grand I mean, they're they basically, they're English lodges. Mm -hmm. oh. So, you know, okay. Now, Initiation is talking about birth, you know. Okay. okay. When you first come into this world, mm. that's what you're taught. Right. What happens? You, you see, what in a ceremony you are blinded. In a sense, there will be you're blindfolded. Sorry. Okay. Blindfolded. The reason being this: when you're in a mother's stomach, mm -hmm. you can't see. Okay. Okay. And then end of day, have you thought about it? Your eyes are totally useless in an absolutely dark room. Yeah. yeah. Okay. You know what is important? What? The concept called Noor. Light. Mm -hmm. Okay. So this is when we will be asking the candidate at a certain point of time, what is a predominant wish that you have right now? Okay. Mm -hmm. Of course, he has to be guided. He'll be, the uh, junior deacon will tell him, say light. Okay. Mm -hmm. That's when this veil is removed. And he can see light. Because without light, mm -hmm. you're absolutely zero, nothing. You're like a blind man going around this world. Sad. Mm -hmm. uh, people, of course, are blind. And I said, but they, you know, I mean, God gives them and other sort of abilities, right? Right. But what we are trying to explain is the concept of birth and the importance of light. Okay. So, so you see, and a lot of people have this, again, this concept that Freemasonry, is actually like a, to put it in our language locally, eh, in local colloquial tone, mm. a term, sorry, a Jaudi kind of an institution. A what? what? Or oh. a Christian organization, institution. Mm -hmm. Absolutely not. Yes, there are a lot of these Christian things that have come in now mm -hmm. because, you know, well, after all, these English guys are involved and, you know, all kind of things. No, but I thought you, you couldn't have Religion. I thought masonry was something that was independent of religion. Absolutely. I'm coming to that. Mm. But the trouble is now, this is something that a lot of us don't feel comfortable, but there are mm. what's called the Rose Squaw. Then they have this movement, you know, they've got this, um, see, you now I'm trying to remember the name. I can't remember. It'll come back to me. Mm -hmm. They have this thing where before one becomes part of the group, if they accept the Trinity concept, which okay. we are fighting against. I mean, some of course, but we see, end of day, this is usually once, so some of us are out. We mm. won't join, right? I mean, first of all, why should I? In fact, I used to quarrel with these people. I said, listen, mm. why can't I come? Mm. Okay? Because I accept Jesus Christ. He's okay. my prophet. Yeah. He's on a be, you know, mm. kind of thing. But you see, so, but I mean, I'm, I don't, let's not go into that. Huh? Yeah. No. I now want to explain to you about the Freemasonry and its broader concept. Okay. okay. So when you pass, it's a different, you know, you go on a different level kind of thing. Mm. Okay. The raising, we are actually enacting the death of the great architect of the temple in Jerusalem. Okay. okay. His name is Hiram Abif. He was son oh. of a widow. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. Because he, what he did was, you see, our concept is that when he was building the temple, he was killed by people of a lower rung mm -hmm. who wanted to know the secrets of his you know, that what he had the knowledge in terms skills. of the building skills yeah, that yeah, okay. to put it a different way, yes. Uh -huh. He refused to give it to them and even had to go to the extent of accepting death. Mm. And he was killed for that. Mm -hmm. Right. So when we're enacting the death of Hiram Abif, mm -hmm. we're also saying to the people, you know, to this person who is a candidate concerned and mm -hmm. the others who are watching, that the day will come no matter how rich you are, mm -hmm. how powerful you are, that's where you're going to go. Because death is going to come to all of us. Okay. You, see? you understand? So, yeah. so at this point, so right. we are, you know, that means that goes to show that we, you see, it's something that Freemason is teaching us perpetually two things. 
understand what happens when you're born right mm-hmm. and accept the fact that you will die one yes. day No so so that's what I was going to say like uh, right now a lot of things that you you're saying I'm sure people are also thinking like this sounds like religion Yeah mm. I was going to say it that- is not religion it is not religion how uh-huh. can what is death only applicable to muslims is no. death only applicable to christians is death only applicable to buddhists mm. no death will come to everybody so this so is like a got to do with the religion you philosophy of life kind of thing is it yes so mm. what has that got to do with religion mm. It is to teach people to accept that no, like I said again, I repeat, mm-hmm. no matter how rich you are, mm-hmm. no matter how powerful you are, yeah. the day will come when you'll be lying there. Okay. Mm. How are candidates accepted into the lodge? Is yeah. there like a screening process of sorts? Yes. Or? yes. Uh, usually, you, you see, if you're interested, now what happens is people sort of they go on the UGLE uh, site mm. but in Singapore of course we call it the District Grand Lodge site mm. okay. I'll come oh. back to the district thing later there's a website yeah you can go oh. and then you write in and then some lodge guy secretaries may pick it up mm. you know some lodges also I think have their own email kind of thing mm. and then they may say okay if you're interested <clears throat> somebody may call you and then you'll be start. you know they will call you for some socials You start coming, you mean you, you start can just apply things. just like that? Sorry? You can just apply like that? Not apply, you write in ah. and then slowly, slowly you'll be starting to meet the brethren of that lodge. Mm. Okay. And they will start assessing whether what kind of person you are. Okay. Okay, after a few months, it may even take up to six months. <laughs> mm-hmm. Then they feel comfortable. Then they'll ask you to sort of, you know, fill up like a particular form. That form has to be submitted through Hermes is a concept. It's a filing way, you know, you can mm. call it Hermes, H-E-R-M-E-S, uh-huh. which is then goes to the United Grand Lodge of England mm. and at the same time, the district. Ooh. Okay. What made you want to join? You as a person? Can I be allowed to finish? Sure, sorry, sorry. <laughs> the <other> question, <laughs> uh, then after that happens, then you interviewed. Yeah. Oh. Now, at that interview stage itself, uh. depending on the answers you give, we've got certain standard questions. Mm. Uh-huh. But we want to know really the character of the person. Yes. And someone or other comes out. We may feel, no, this is not the right guy. Mm. I see. After the interview, then he has to be put up for a certain period. Mm. Like a one month or what. And then the day will come when he has to be balloted. He can be balloted and initiated the same day. Mm. Or he can be balloted, like say this month, and then initiated the next month. Right. Mm. So the waiting period can be anything between a year mm. or longer. Wow. Okay. Before one person is accepted. We try not to rush because we want to get to know the particular person. Yes. Okay. Now, can I have your question again? Why did you personally want to join? Why do you want to become a Mason? Okay, let me explain this to you in my... In the is best it, way well, that I, le, le, okay, yeah, it's not, I mean, you know, it's, yeah, it's, I have to think about this because, you see, what happened was this, I, I you, have been in Rotary before, I've been in Lions before. Okay. Mm, okay. I quit Rotary, but I've gone back to Rotary well, again. What is this, Rotary? Other clubs. Rotary mm. International. Uh-huh. It's a club, it's, a, it's just, you know, social club and, you uh-huh. know, yeah, you're talking okay. about charity and all that. So what happened was um, there's this particular lawyer, a friend of mine, who's okay. no longer in practice. He was three years my senior. Mm-hmm. He's been a mason for a long, long time. Mm-hmm. He's a very good mason. He sort of mentions says, "Hey, listen, he comes from a different lodge. Huh? Mm-hmm. He's from Lodge Singapore. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. At that time, I don't know why there was some issues within Zedlin in the East where they couldn't. Nobody was prepared to take the." position of a virtual master. A virtual master is a person who rules the lodge for that one year. Wow. Okay. okay, rules means he's known as a virtual master. Mm-hmm. Okay, and he has to do the rituals and everything all that later. Mm-hmm. Right? Wishful master. Worshipful master. Worshipful master. Yeah. Worshipful master. master. Okay. Okay. WM. So, he was asked to be the virtual master of Zetland in the East Lodge. Mm-hmm. His name is Lee Tau Ket. Okay. Ah. So when he took the chair, normally for, in this particular case, our lodge called Zedlin in the East, the installation of a master takes place in December. Okay. Mm. It's fixed. Okay. It's right. December. Okay. I'll come back to you that a while later. Because 
Okay, and let me explain. Our birth date of the lodge is 26 February 1845. Wow. But we were consecrated. That means consecrated means formally became a lodge. Mm-hmm. 8th December 1845. Ah. Mm-hmm. So our installation of new masters every year takes place within the space of the dates. Okay. The right, second right, Friday right, right. or the, uh, something you can do a Saturday. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Usually it's the second Friday or Saturday. But it's within that at first i mean the second friday yes. at few days right okay so what happened was talkat asked me listen i think you probably ready now uh-huh. so ready for what to free masonry mm-hmm. now before that there's this one man called he will know of him mm-hmm. asan almano he's a oh, lawyer he's a very oh, senior okay. lawyer formerly with sanraj and chair mm-hmm. oh. now with his former master called ramisen ramisen is passed on mm-hmm. Tansri Almano, his late father, mm-hmm. who used to be Tengku Abdul Rahman's personal lawyer, mm-hmm. used to see me in court. What are you doing, young man? He said, I'm going back to work. Rubbish. He will drag me mm-hmm. to the <coughs> Freemasons bar. Uh, oh. I mean, sorry to say this, but <laughs> Tansri was Tansri. He was Tekan, one stout, uh, and then go to office. Uh, mm-hmm. That's their lifestyle. And you know why I'm talking about Tansri Almano? Mm. Because Tansi Almanor's clerk uh-huh. was a man called Ibrahim. Okay. Oh. And it is these late Ibrahim's children who made a mark in Singapore. One of whom became a minister called Yaakob Ibrahim. Uh-huh. Mm-hmm. Oh. Okay. Then, of course, we know of lawyers in the family. Yes. Uh-huh. My classmate was Hassan Ibrahim. Uh-huh. And we have, of course, a judge, a district judge. Yes. No off. I don't mm-hmm. want to mention names. Okay. <laughs> And there's a younger person who's a lawyer also who was yes. formerly Harry Elias. Yeah. yeah. So imagine those days the clerks were running the law firms. Mm. So I used to I got to know about Freemasonry already then because mm. he was dragging me to that the bar there, you mm. know. And there's he says you can have a coffee. So I'll have my coffee. Mm. Okay. Then you know. Okay. So Tansri took a liking to me and we were quite close. And surprisingly mm. then I became very close to his own son, okay? Right, right. So so when when Tauket said, "Listen, I think you're ready," because Tauket has seen me there before, right? Yeah. Accepted. Uh-huh. So when Tauket was in the chair, he initiated me and he passed me. Uh-huh. He could have even raised me in that one year he was there. What? But you couldn't do it because his son uh-huh. had been initiated, uh-huh. passed and he wanted to raise his son. Uh-huh. And the son, by the way, is a person who created this thing called, you know, the the mini uh, speakers, the oh. very famous mini speakers. Mini the Bluetooth speakers. speakers. No, what is it called? That there was a name for these mini speakers. Creative speakers. I Not creative. I it know. was so famous that I. Re- it seems so. Victoria Beats. Beckham uh-huh. had it in the back. And she was stopped at Madrid airport, and she uh-huh. realized, oh, I don't carry, I don't travel, and no, oh, they put in these words, of course, they took the picture, mm-hmm. say, I don't travel uh, anywhere else without this, you know, speakers kind of thing. Uh, right. They, of course, they took the picture, they hunt them, the words line, <laughs> okay. so. so that's how famous he was, and he has sold his company, of course, he mm-hmm. made his pile, uh-huh. he sold right. a company yeah. for a couple of million dollars, mm-hmm. and you know, so he's always been into this sounding because he's, so this was his son Ryan, mm-hmm. Ryan, no, Ryan, okay. uh, um, Lee, yeah? mm-hmm. and we, so this is how I got. When, when okay, so say... basically, Lee Tauket brought me into Freemasonry. Mm-hmm. Frankly, when I was asked to join, I was blur about the whole thing. Mm-hmm. But he sort of started talking to me about it, mm-hmm. and then you know he brought me for the interview. Of course, you know then obviously everything was favorable. Yeah, was balloted favorably, and next thing I know, I was initiated. So, so that was in this, year two zero zero six. This is what I want to ask you. You mentioned you get initiated, and then you get raised. No, passed first. Passed, yeah. Passed. Initiate, then pass, passed and, and then, then raised. raised. That's called the third degree. What's all of these things? They are okay. There are rituals performed in these ceremonies. Mm. Initiate initiation. We are talking about birth. The one, that, uh-huh. yeah, you described the yeah. the blindfolding and ah, blindfolding. Yeah lah, you said it just now. Oh, yeah. At yeah. some point, you know, you can, you know, <clears throat> because. Right. You're brought in in the into the oh the dark the darkness, the darkness. yeah yes. then you get yeah, to see the, the light yeah. yes yeah. because to to explain to you what it means uh-huh. what birth and all that you see so okay. okay now by the way a lot of people talk about these ceremonies you see you must remember we have to take an oath not to divulge what takes place in the temple okay oh oh you do 
Okay. But you can, any of you guys, at any point of time, if you want to see the temple, you are most welcome. Mm. Oh, oh. It's nothing. It's just another place. Now, why you may ask, why do we call this a temple? Mm -hmm. Why not a mosque? Why not, a, say, a synagogue? Right. Why not whatever other words, right? Mm. You must remember, we rather call it a generic name. Mm. Okay. Because from time immemorial, when all these kings were building something, they called that houses of worship as yep. temples. temples. Yes. Yes. yes, yes. Okay? Mm. This is the one at Coleman Street, is it? Right. And ah, this is where it. all the lodge meetings takes place. Okay. Oh. And by the way, that lodge, that building cannot be acquired by the PAP government oh. because that was one of the guarantees that they had to give to the Brits when they left. Oh, oh really? These buildings we preserve. Yes. Oh, wow. Otherwise, you know, that would have probably have been acquired also. <laughs> okay. Wow. Okay. Yeah. That's powerful, right? Was there, right. It's yeah. a fact. Yeah. Was Sir Stanford Raffles a mason? Yes. Serious? Yes. Why oh, should mm. I should like Lord of India, India, He was a mason. Mm. Now, at this point of time, what I'm going to do, sorry, I mean, this is a particular book that was published in the year that when I was a master. Mm. You was were a, a master? I was the 175th master of my lodge called the Zellan in the East Lodge. Mm. Wow. So this book was published to record certain history. Mm. You know, and basically it is what is called our... You know, it's, it's a handful, a mouthful, sorry. Dodrans by Sentinel means 175 year. Mm. Yeah. Now, I'm going to hand you this book, Raman. Uh -huh. <laughs> There's a lot of stuff to read. Yeah. You can take your time. Uh -huh. But remember, like people like Napier, Drew and Napier, mm. uh -huh. was a member of the Lodge wow. from 1845. Oh, damn. Yeah. So it's a lot of okay. high profile yeah. people actually. And yeah. of course, all the others that you know of mm. and all those people that you read, you see the name Smith Street. Yeah. Uh, ah, yeah. You see, like example, some other names, you know, whatever bridge, this bridge, Elgin Bridge, mm. all these were Masons, whether from my lodge, mm. this lodge that I belong to, mm -hmm. or from other lodges, because other lodges came about later. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But basically, they were all masons. Mm -hmm. What so sort now, of let me hand this yeah. book to you. Wow. This let's, is your let's copy zoom that, now. Let's zoom that this in. is like a power. I feel okay. powerful. Yes. One step towards yeah. masonry. Yeah, I, I was flipping <laughs> through the, the book just yeah, you, now. I mean, uh -huh. you can, of course, yeah. lend it to them. Yeah. Yeah. We only published 350 copies. Oh. Yeah. So, you know, so, yeah, basically, so... Wow. How, how many members are there? I mean, are you allowed to, to say? No, how no, many? it doesn't matter. But my lodge, the numbers have dwindled. Mm. Uh -huh. the, I think one of the larger lodges is called St. George Lodge. Okay, they call okay. lot, And they they have got more, uh, I notice, the tilt is more on Europeans in a sense. Mm. We are more Asian-based. Okay. Mm. Maybe too many Indians at this point of time. <laughs> <laughs> I was flipping through and I didn't notice a lot of uh, a lot of Indians. Yeah, a lot of Indians. Uh, in, in the, okay, and then the, the other thing is this. Okay, mm -hmm. uh, you all have, may not have asked this, but just to again remove the misconception that it's a religious thing. Yeah. yeah. You see, because when I said that, we were asked one very pertinent question before you can be a Mason: mm. that do you believe in God? Mm. And you must say yes, right? Mm -hmm. Why? Because we accept him as a creator. Mm -hmm. But in the in Freemasonry language, we call him the great architect of the universe. Wow. Right. Or we call him the great geometrician of the universe. Right. In a sense, the concept is the same. Mm -hmm. He's a builder. He yep. built, I mean, he created it, so he's an architect. Mm -hmm. And why we say geomet geometrician, if you look at the way the alignment of the stars and all this, uh, and, the, and the planets, it's pure geometry. Yeah. Mm. So, I mean, ne and ne it's only his work, no? Mm. And it's nobody else's work. Yeah, so, so needless, so quite, yeah. needless to say, I mean, one of the philosophies of uh, Freemasonry is intelligent design, la, I would imagine. That I, I've not thought it in, along those lines. It's a, yeah, it's, I mean, I, I sort of take your point. Mm -hmm. uh, can you repeat intelligent design? Yeah, yeah, so like the idea that, you know, there is some force that it guides. It does not cross our minds, you know, yeah. The, I think there's something, I'll take that away from you. <laughs> it's, it's, it's a concept. Oh yeah. my. Intelligent just... <laughs> design versus evolution. Did, yeah, did I just contribute to the development of yes. <laughs> No, no, I no, I won't say evolution because, you see, 
you must remember freemasonry came about much later what we thought mm. of course people are always building things mm. you see now you think about it huh? mm-hmm. example you see okay in all this the rituals in relation to freemasonry mm. we go back to one person okay, okay. solomon okay mm. you see solomon is supposed to have built a temple dedicated to his almighty okay right? okay which even when the queen of sheba came to see it mm-hmm. she sort of was odd with its mm-hmm. you know its beauty mm. yes okay the builder of this particular temple you know is aram abif son of a widow mm. the one because there was mentioned. hiram the king of tyre right. t y r e so they said they have to call him king hiram same name hiram abif uh-huh. okay that's why when we go to certain countries in europe mm-hmm. right when we want to be recognized and we need help mm-hmm. there is a way that we can do we like a certain thing we do and says come to me you sons of the widow mm-hmm. people recognize me as a mason and they'll come and help me wow wow oh. and this is international like they will recognize it's international what sort I've, of yeah i want to ask like what sort of privileges does a mason member receive mm, yeah. ah, if you think along those lines then please you should not be a mason <laughs> yeah i mean like that <laughs> i feel it's, it's a question correct. in in, in, in I, general I, i'm yeah. glad you asked this because mm. let me make it very very clear and i hope people the right people will be listening in mm, right right because there are a lot of people who have come in with wrong motives mm. i see oh okay you, you can you see you can't stop human humans from having so called ambitions you know, uh, uh noble motives or rather lying about themselves yeah, and, yeah. you know but actually they have ulterior motives mm. so you see if you're coming there to better yourself as a human being that is a place mm. right mm. but if you're coming there to think that you can sort of advance your business mm. Mm. advance your career or do anything in relation to you know i mean if you want a name yes that nothing wrong everybody wants a name right mm-hmm. everybody wants to sort of feel hey he, he or she you know i mean i'm don't i'm just talking generally now no mm-hmm. no no once i mean you know you don't want to sort of put yourself down right and some of us are recognized by our fathers names mm-hmm. i mean with due respect yeah i mean i'm telling you in my community if not for the fact that my late father was who he was mm. right i wouldn't be recognized Why? Because my late father did a lot. I mean, he educated himself up to all levels. He was an ACS old boy mm-hmm. from 1912 to 1922. I used to disturb him. I said, "Why the 11th year?" And he said, "You idiot! Sec- First of all, what remember?" <laughs> so they, they the school, the close. And you know where the ACS was, right? Mm. Next Mugatima. building with the archives building next to the, my the Holman Street right. Temple building. Oh, aha, yeah, yeah. Mm. Okay. Oh, yeah. Because my yeah, grandfather yeah. had two shops in Arab Street. So from mm. there the treasure man used to bring him to Coleman Street. Right. Okay. And I mean I am proud to say that my late father was then the secretary general of all these Muslim organizations where they all get together to organize a Prophet Muhammad birthday celebrations. Mm. I see. Oh. The year when the riots happened, mm. the permit was in his name. Wow. Oh, serious. Wow. Yes. So of course he was in somewhere in Kampung Supu area mm. helping people. Here my of course then the announcement came in relation to I'm moving away from freemasonry. Mm-hmm. Oh okay. The announcement came about the 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 uh uh curfew and all curfew that. thing all that. Uh-huh. Literally my mother was you know we were of course staying in the in the Hyderabad Hi- 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 place uh uh-huh. yeah. Arab Street. Cuz that's where we watch right? Yes. Okay the parade will pass through Arab Street but uh-huh. 9 o'clock 10 o'clock see your father is not home. I think by 11 probably we were sleeping already. Mm. I mean sorry to put it in 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 this language my mother was probably shitting bricks mm-hmm. my father could have just called home but he had been picked up by the police because like when mm. he wanted a damn statement mm. I don't blame mm. correct right because there's the permit is in his name yes mm. right 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 so then of course send back you know 2 in the morning so my mother was of course said, what he could you? have been dead lying somewhere right yeah yeah, yeah. 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 You know, because it I, was a riot right yeah huh? it was a riot right yeah it was a riot exactly but i tell you the but what something that really because of this that happened huh? believe it or not but i've seen in my own eyes yeah. how the chinese will come from the beach road side the police from the kampong mm. things happen if one guy falls 
and the others run uh, that guy is finished oh, whether yeah. he'll be dead or he'll be whacked until you know yeah. out kind Crushed of thing we don't know yeah. mm-hmm. but i saw them own eyes you know i mean like it was uh, some, something and then just uh, and then like something you can't see because then somebody else will come and drag him away later mm-hmm. later whether the guy dies or not it can happen that to happen to mm-hmm. the chinese or the malays for nearly four weeks remember mm-hmm. of course all of us were having fun mm-hmm. no school <laughs> this is 1964 now yeah. hey, Ramal, you were around man during no, the time no 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 i mean i read this is three lah oh yeah. okay he wasn't probably born then yeah. <laughs> i'm not that old bro no that's why i was also like wait this is i mean like i am definitely not born during that period so mm. I, like i've no, only so you, okay so coming back to freemasonry my the point is is yeah. if you're there to make a name for yourself for selfish reasons mm. then no don't join mm. yeah but if you want to of course nothing wrong with trying to You don't feel good about yourself and all that. Mm. Because you see, you must remember, in Freemasonry, there's this thing called also promotions. Mm. Okay. Then you get district promotion, mm. then grand promotion, grand lodge promotion, right. that kind of thing. You know? So that's what I mean. But let's not go into all so that. There's like, like a hierarchy. Ah, uh, like a hierarchy. Of okay, okay. Of course, so, there's a hierarchy. But once you are a virtual master, you're known as a virtual brother. Ah, I see. You know? So based on what you were saying just now, I mean, of course, like you said, you know, you shouldn't be joining based on selfish reasons. But just based on what you're saying, it sounds like there are a lot of, you know, very successful. Powerful people. Very, yeah, very powerful yeah, people but there. But those people are powerful, didn't join and become powerful. They were already uh, see. people of some... Degree of influence. Significance uh, or mm. whatever. So, or alternatively, of course, I mean, example... Take for instance my son. Mm. He's now he's just finished his diploma in law. Yeah. Mm. Uh-huh. Okay, and I'm not going to sponsor him. He, I told him, listen, <laughs> those years are like that. Yeah. I had mm. a bursary of two thousand dollars and mm. I supported myself. Mm. Right? He has to work and let him study. Mm. Even if you pass law at the age of thirty-five or forty, in fact, I feel it's better. I see young guys coming out with degrees. Mm. Mm. Sorry, but the level of maturity is down there. Ah, yeah. Yes, yeah. <laughs> I agree with you. Okay, so the point what I'm driving is that take your time. No, what I'm going to say is that assuming tomorrow he is now brought into Freemasonry, yeah, one he must be able to pay the lodge dues, right? Mm-hmm. Oh, you have to pay. And by the way, certain lodges meet twelve times a year, certain eight, certain six, or depending on the constitution of the right. lodge. Okay. Mm-hmm. Every meeting is a formal meeting. Mm. That means we are wearing a tuxedo. Wow. We are wearing a bow tie. Oh, nice. Okay. All right. And unless of course this sick level you can wear what is called a UGLE tie. Mm-hmm. After a meeting we have what is called a festive board where we have dinner together. Oh, mm. okay. So the dinner by the way the festive board is considered part of the meeting. Now, so if you keep on coming for meetings and you don't join the festive board yeah. because you see you don't have money, then oh. you're not ready to be a mm. mason. So you must be financially oh. okay, Sound. not oh. rich but okay. Right, mm. right, right. Able to have, able to withstand. You know? Is yeah. it expensive? I mean, well, depends. And it's me. I mean, you see, trouble is actually the, we have to order the food from the same place, which is this <laughs> restaurant there now. We're getting sick of the food. But some lodges <laughs> will charge forty, some fifty. Average yeah. is about fifty bucks. Okay, yeah. Okay, no, you may say okay, but it's still some people feel yeah, it's yeah, unnecessary. It's okay for you. Of course, sometimes <laughs> I also don't have because I'm just I don't want, because I don't want to. Sometimes there's a reason I may not feel comfortable with wanting to assimilate or just be nice on that day. I've got no. <laughs> I may say no. <laughs> I've decided I'm not going to join the festive board. Oh. But the idea is that you cannot be jo- coming for meetings and for the entire period not yeah, being able yeah. not joining them. Oh. It's not right oh. because the festive board is part of the meeting. I see. It's you know so it's so do they make the food halal and all this? Well, it's well it's that's a problem. Oh. <laughs> it's, I won't say halal but you see they serve fish, they oh, serve yeah. seafood. Yeah. Okay. So you know, even yeah. the Freemasons can run away from this problem. Yeah, but as you know, these days, ah, uh, uh, our beef in Singapore, uh, our mutton in Singapore, yeah. it all comes from Australia, oh, yes. New Zealand. It's all automatically halal. Mm. Correct. Mm. That's why we try to see. They don't believe me. And then the main chef Nobody there don't believe me. Uh-huh. in this restaurant is a Malay guy. Oh. oh. Wait, is that true? It's yeah, true. What? All beef, like it's true. We don't import from Argentina. We don't import from India. 
And we oh. do, we do. There are people who import Argentina in the even parts of Europe. There but are small, importers, but oh, that means they are. Oh. That means, but they are. They have to get special license. Yes. Oh, okay. not sold through the markets. And what? Oh. They probably in the butcheries. I so, see. So, so just to address that point, yeah. yeah. <laughs> all the meat that is bought, especially from Australia and New Zealand. Mm. For the sake of like uh, ease, everything is slaughtered in a halal way. Because it's going oh. to most yeah. the big markets in Europe, Middle East. Yeah. I see. Yeah, so my friends are not asked to lepak. Is it halal or not? No, it's, no, it wait, is. wait, wait. Uh, that's what you must wait. But who the importer is will determine whether or not the meat is contaminated. If mm. you have an importer who imports halal meat and also pork and then it's dwindling in the same yeah. uh, freezer side by side, which I know because I know chefs Yes. to work in such importance, yes. then they say it will no longer okay, become Okay, when you halal. say actually in the same, like say you mean to say in the same <laughs> particular container. Not just container. See, when they, when they, uh, uh, when large, like, large, uh, what do you call this, large importers, mm. like Indoguna, la, Ben Foods, la, Wa, yes, la, yes. all these are huge yeah, importers. Of course. When they bring in, they will have to pare down the, the meat, they will have to process the meat. Mm. They do, They are under no, uh, what do you call this, no duty or purpose to want to make sure like But there's a see, halal section. But from what I understand, nah, nah, they're all section. individually wrapped, you know. The whole... So even say, a, uh, uh, like say the whole lamb is there, right? Mm. Yes. And then let's say you talk about pork, mm. but this is wrapped, you know. Yes, it's wrapped in a yeah. So okay, white man. <laughs> okay, what's your problems? Yeah, I mean, if, if you're okay, gonna be, okay. if you're gonna have this, at, then I think it's gonna be very difficult. No, yeah. if you okay, okay lah. I'm okay. Shout out to my trainer. It's okay. <laughs> you heard it first on plenty. No, 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 no. Don't okay, do that to people. Don't spread. I'm not I, and any under. We I'm, have been poor man. So what? Uh, well, no, Mui's gonna perform me. No, no, no. Let, <laughs> let, I'm very sure uh, Mufti got no. Uh, yeah, Mufti yeah, got no jurisdiction over us. I no, but I, I think <laughs> that one we have to draw a line. La. I mean, uh. I as long as I know. To me, I go to the extent of somebody is eating in front of me. Uh. If he or she is eating, having pork, it doesn't matter. Yeah, yeah. As long yeah, as yeah. I'm not told to take it. Yeah, correct. And yes. don't then please then don't use your fork. So as is, if I want something. You want, I'll give it to you. Oh, right, right, right. <laughs> but you right. don't use your phone. Then like, hey, come on. I mean, it's it's not really bad, but you know, I will feel uncomfortable right after that. <laughs> so, you know, that kind of thing, like, you know. So other no, than but that, I agree. But that's why I say, <laughs> when the meat importer, they are, they, are, they wouldn't care. Why. They, it's all in the yeah, same. Yeah, but like I said, it's actually not, even it doesn't touch. And even if it touches, it's also this, it's actually sort of put in a plastic wrap from what I understand. Yeah, you are right. But it's just the handling. Whether the handling they constantly... I mean, bottom line is Rama not comfortable with the... Yeah, like yeah, the bottom line, I'm, yeah. I'm not enforcing my view. Yeah, 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 yeah. I'm just saying we cannot broad brush and say, oh, like that, okay lah. But end of day, whatever you buy from Teka also comes from all these places. No. <laughs> different waters. <laughs> Who told you? I know. I check. Right, back to masonry. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. Yes, yeah. please. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Uh, But I mean, basically, there's no running away from this. Because like, yeah, even yeah. the Freemasons have to deal with this. <laughs> yes. So, yeah. I mean, I Okay, okay, wait, wait. Off cast, you mentioned yeah. that Freemasons and the Catholic Church uh, no, have their issues. No, no. Let me put it a different way. <laughs> so that I do not, no one can sort of, huh. I mean, no one will be, of course. Offended. It's not a puffer scenario, but <laughs> like, you know, I don't want to be misunderstood. Uh, okay. yeah. But I know for a fact that the Catholic Church doesn't endorse Freemasonry. Right, right. Mm. And they have actually told their Congregants, those, yeah. I mean, people who adhere to their teachings, mm. right. say, please, do not. But I know for a fact of, of Catholics who are Masons. Oh. You know, I mean, so, similarly, there are also some Muslims who feel that way. Yes. Which is also, to me, it's not right. Because it doesn't actually, there is, you see, to me, like I already made it very clear to anybody and everybody, if it was anything to do with Judaism or Christianity, I'll mm. be the first person to say no. Mm -hmm. I see. But they have, of course, along the years, over the years, or rather, not over, along, mm. over the years and, you know, over the time, what has happened is that there are certain, these are called side degrees. Huh? Mm -hmm. You see, you must remember, in Freemasonry, we have what is called the craft lodges. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All these lodges are known as craft lodges. Okay. okay. A craft lodge can mean Irish craft, Irish lodge, English, Scottish, mm. even French. Mm. Then there's side degrees. Mm. Side degrees is like chapter, mark, 
and you know also other so many things like, like that smaller mm-hmm. factions is it uh, smaller eh? no they've got different things like example uh i'm part of the conclave thing mm-hmm. okay. we call it the eastern archipelago i know conclave thing mm. you see there's something to do with there's one it's called called is you know there's something about, about the noah's ark okay okay you know emphasis one is about joshua and david oh right that would yes. about mm. how you know what happened was when he was sort of sent off the kingdom of israel right mm. you know whether you know because he was raised by this king and all that yeah. and the jealousy between brothers yeah. and then he came back right mm-hmm. so you must understand so this you see there there are certain things in this side degrees where there's emphasis about you know this different we who we consider as prophets of god it's right, right, Islam, right. right? Mm-hmm. and take for instance in this particular for for this uh side degree that i belong to the eac call it mm-hmm. the way we actually address each other assalamu alaikum oh, mm. oh. and the reply is walaikum salam what oh. does it mean is it arabic yes. is it on yes. you Mm. Yeah. So even the non-Muslim members <laughs> wow. of, of this side, uh, side chapter, that you're talking about, degree. the side degree, yeah. So even for the non-Muslim side uh, degree yeah, member, yeah. oh, because it's Arabic. Oh. Right. Mm. Is he? You see, you must remember those days was what the Hebrew Arabic. Yes. 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 Yeah. yeah. Mm. And you must remember that if you think about, if you look at the, the prophets, ah, uh, mm-hmm. they all from the same family. You know, mm. when I say family means, ah. Uh, You, you see, like uh, yeah, Semites, right? This Semitic, family. yeah, Semitic, yeah, yeah Semitic, yeah. yes. You see, hmm. but you know the, how so, the differences came. I mean, you see, a lot of people don't understand this, and we know that. I mean, I put it this way. Ah, huh? sorry to say this, yeah. it may offend some people. We know that Jesus, whom we call as Isa Nabi, was a Jew, mm. right? Would he have taken pork? No way. Would he have taken wine? No way. Hmm. Why? He did not because he was a Jew. He would have been taught the ways. Mm-hmm. You must see. remember, Musa Nabi came before him. Uh-huh. Yes. Okay. <laughs> so no way would he have taken. He would have partaken of wine. Mm-hmm. That's not wine. Well, wine wine wasn't a prohibition then, right? No. That's you see. You don't understand. It could be just grape. But slightly fermented in the sense, but not wine in the sense of the word wine. Okay, right. So, because you see, but of course we also know about the disciples spreading. Mm-hmm. Peter went to Rome. He had no choice. He became a farmer, so he raised sheep, mm. he raised pigs, he raised goats. Mm. So now they all say, "Oh, we can eat. It's okay." But but if you really follow Christianity in its purity, mm-hmm. you're not supposed to touch pork. Right. Mm. So, so th- I mean, I'm. I may be. This may be something that the government may puff on me. But <laughs> no, like, think about it. <laughs> He's a Jew. He wouldn't. He did not touch pork. Mm. So okay. So I'm hearing that, like, because the even the history of the Freemasons, <laughs> right? Like you're talking about also, like, and you the- must remember they were all known as prophets of Islam uh-huh. because they believe. What is the meaning of Islam? Uh-huh. Submission to His will. Yes. Yes. Mm. So, yeah. so there is so much overlap actually because mm. like the history of that region is so Middle East, yeah, yeah, in like the Abrahamic traditions, basically. Yes. Yes. Abrahamic, yeah. yeah. So, like the Freemasons also draw back. We do to that. that. We draw from that. Oh, okay. So there's I I I flipped through the book when you showed it to me just now, yeah. mm. and there is this uh, another misconception because we. I mean, it's rare to have the opportunity to have a real mason in the room with us talking yeah. to us. So what's the mason? So there's this, this, and it, it was referred to in the opening pages about the the line between masonry and the Knights Templar. And Correct. We, we uh, know the Knights Templar has its own, like people. That have, is the group that actually now exists also amongst one of the like side degree, mm-hmm. which oh. is we feel there is a lot of. You see, there is like undercurrent about this thing. I mean, there's a lot of people are not happy about this. Though. Okay, actually, it's true. I mean, I as a mason now can openly challenge and ask the UGLA says, "Why are you having this? Mm. Where you know only certain people can join? That means that's this where the religion thing comes in, right? Mm. Uh, I mean, it feels very exclusive. Okay, then if you ask me why am I not prepared to do it, I ask myself why should I bother? Mm. Because should I be the sore thumb there? So you know, the question is this." But there, there may come a time mm-hmm. 
when I feel, hey, I got nothing to lose. Let's say I eighty, I'm, I turn eighty. Mm -hmm. If I do live mm -hmm. and I'm very healthy, you know, uh, very alert, I may just take them on. Take who on? The UGLA and says, why do you do this? What's It's UGLA? United Grand Lodge of England. Uh huh. You know, so why are they allowing this thing like Knights Templar? Oh. oh, you're right. Okay. You see, because we all know about what Knights Templar did. I mean, they what were did, basically. What did it tell us? We need to know. We are, no, I, the Knights Templar was like an, they, they were like an army kind of thing, right? Yes. Mm. yes. They came to fight. They were trying. You know, they are the ones who came to decree. I mean, they fought in the name of Christianity. They came all the way to fight to the Jerusalem. Turks mm -hmm. during the Crusader War. Not Jerusalem, kind of thing, but rather. Yeah. Constantinople, which oh, is Istanbul. Yes, 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 okay, yes, yes, yeah. yes, yes. So who took over? I mean, finally it was Artuk's grand, sorry, son, the third son, mm -hmm. Osman, mm -hmm. who then brought, who sort of defeated the yeah. uh, Christian forces, right? Okay. Mm -hmm. yes. And that's how Istanbul came about. I mm -hmm. see. It was right. not Constantinople. Yes. There was a, like the headquarters in the in the Middle East, they call it. Mm -hmm. Because right, it's right. between Asia and Europe. Yes, yes. yes. Capital of the world, right? Yes. Yeah. So, so, so who were they? Were they in any way related to the Knights Templar or not? Uh, to the to the Masonry movement? No, or no, no. They were not Masons as such. I don't think so. But now the trouble is there is a side called Knights Templar. Mm. Mm. Yeah. So, And you know, when they're wearing the robes, they have this Christian, I mean, like a church, I mean, like the, the, cross, uh, the cross thing, all that. Yeah. Uh, you see? So, I mean, there are a lot of rumblings about this. Right. And there's a lot of unhappiness, I'm telling you. So even see. internally, there are all these kind of like political uh, factions. Of course. Factions I mean, and, put it mm. better, f f simple, my friend. You bring three or four men together, politics <laughs> is <good. laughs> uh, okay. Of course, there's politics that's within true, lodges. That's true. Yeah, there's yeah. a lot of politics right now going mm. on. Okay. In so any and every lodge. And on that point, you mentioned something. You bring three or four men together, there will be politics. Are there women masons? Yeah, not, because I was flipping not, through, I didn't see a single woman. Within UGLE, mm. not amongst the Masons in this part of the world, mm -hmm. Africa, India, no. I believe, because you must remember, there's, a, there's also a Grand Lodge in America. Right. Mm. Women fought for it because of this equal rights. Yes, yes. There are lady Masons, only live for ladies' lodges. In oh, US. The US. Trust I believe the that. US to try and change everything. Yes. I mean, There's they a had reason, civil rights movement, you, right? I can't explain why, seriously, why only men. Mm -hmm. Because this is there where I go into the rituals and what happens. Right, right, okay. right. But there is a reason, a deep reason, and a very valid reason why women it's, cannot be brought in. So it's also schools. like kind of historical, traditional No, as well. it's not only historical. There's something about certain oh. things the way we do. Is it biological? Right. No, let, let's not go into that. <laughs> okay. 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 So, <laughs> so it's interesting. And I will, I, I, okay, hold on. I believe we can respect the fact that there are things that you cannot talk about. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Right? And I understand that the rituals are sacred. It's sacred yeah. to the... No, certain the, things I can tell you all. Mm -hmm, certain things mm -hmm. I can tell you all. Yeah. Okay, so what? <laughs> I mean, I'm just curious. At least yeah. I'm curious. <laughs> Why do they always say when you become a mason, you ascend to the throne of Solomon? Ooh. Ah, no, you don't ascend. Huh. When I become a virtual master, I am... I as, I sort of sit on the chair of King Solomon. They call it. Wow. Mm. It's like, it's, it's like, in a sense that you're taking the chair. Yeah. So it's the same concept as when we're in court. Mm. Oh. When we are saying, good morning, sir, do you know that he's in another LLB honors? Yes. You could be having masters. Mm. You could be having a JD. Mm. That joker could be just be an LLB honors. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we have to call him sir. Yes. That we are respecting the chair. Yeah. Oh. So, oh, so it's like metaphorical. Mm. Like it's, it's, I see. It's a symbolic expression of respect for that Correct. office. Wow. And then you see the different salutes given to the chair. Okay. In, in the first degree, in mm. the second degree, in the third degree. Okay. So that I can't go into. Yes. But It just basically is like you put it rightly, respect. Mm. So it is that, you know, so we are giving just like the high court judge that sits in the chair. Mm. It's a special thing. Mm. It's elevated. It's elevated to the bench. Wow. So, okay. So, you know, in a sense. Yeah. There is, the, I mean, right now. Okay, right? hold on, hold on. Uh, before you go to that. Yeah. You see, uh, you say, don't think that you should join because you want power. But when you describe all this, uh, there mm. is that romanticism Definitely. of mystery, power, mm. and wealth. Yes. That appeals no, to not him. wealth. 
But power, yes. Yes. But you see, you don't understand. But but when you're intending to join, mm. if you already have that concept, mm. then you're not fit to be a mason. Wow. Mm. Okay. Be pure of heart. Mm. Pure so, of intention. You had a question. No, so, so actually... I mean, how would you, re- I'm, I don't know if you would have maybe heard this. I mean, please don't get offended. No, but no. I, I imagine you might have uh, faced some people who say like, you know, such an elite men's club. You know, only men, um, powerful. Uh, I mean, like you said, like, they might have not joined because they want to yeah. be powerful, but they do have, they are people yeah. of status. We have heard of it and we just dismiss it. <laughs> because okay. we, know, we know it's not true, right? <laughs> right, 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 right. Because right. the people who are very elitist and the people who are very down, Yes. They're ordinary people. They're ordinary folks or mm. masons. Mm. Ah, okay. So of it's course. not only... Right, 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 right. You right. don't have to be a professional. Mm. Mm. Ah. I okay. mean, you can be... If you think you can afford it, mm. you could be working as an ordinary person. But... I mean, there's people who are just ordinary businessmen and all that. Mm. They don't have qualifications. I see. Mm. Right. But they are because there's an interest. There must be a genuine interest. You see, the whole idea of being wanting to be a mason is, is like to make good men better. Mm. Yes. I remember seeing this on the website. I think there was a, like one of the yeah. ethos or something, right? Mm-hmm. Oh, really? Uh, You're reading yeah. prior to this. Yeah. So that, no, no. Yeah. So on the website it says, about Freemasonry. Freemasonry yeah. has been called many things, some mm-hmm. untrue and unflattering. Mm-hmm. But in short, Freemasonry is a system of learning designed to make good men better, better. men. Mm. Which is... Did, did wow. you design this? Like, did you no, come no, up with this no, no, motto? No, no, no. It's, it's there. I know that. Uh, so it's always one. been... It's After a... you learn it like, along the way, you know. Right, um, right, I mean, right. you're supposed to know it straight away. Wow. Mm-hmm. Okay. Do, do you grapple with public optics coming from the Muslim community yeah. being mm-hmm. a Mason? Like, do you get flack from... No. Are they Muslims? No. I see. What are the I other... I mean, funny, people? assuming, uh, mm. you know, I'm a Shia Muslim, uh, mm. okay? I'm... We are, my community is known as the Dawdi Boras. Mm. Yes. Not a single Amil over the years has ever opened his mouth and said anything. Mm. Because why? I'm not bringing Freemasonry to the masjid. I mm. see. Right. Mm. You see, there's a difference. Okay. All right. What is Freemasonry? What I do is there. Mm. In the mosque, I pray behind him. He's mm, my Amil. Mm, mm. Mm. Right. I'm a nobody. Mm. I have to accept. Because why? I've been told that even if I make mistake my prayers, yeah. still I get 25%, uh, 25 times <laughs> the uh, blessing, right? Yes. Right, 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 right. Because you're praying behind an... Because it's the uh, uh, We call him the Amil. La, right, right. Behind the Imam. So... You just now you were saying that there are a lot of Indians in the lodge, right? Like mm, a lot yeah. of Indian Freemasons. I mean, I'm I'm just curious. what attracts them. I don't know why. <laughs> yeah, maybe, I mean, <laughs> maybe they're all politicians. That's why they own right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I'm curious about that because I mean, obviously, you yourself you're an Indian Muslim, uh-huh. uh, but I, I no, suppose there are Malay Muslims too who are Masons. Ah, uh, really? There'll be like yeah. any and, notable characters. <laughs> hmm, I have to check. Uh. <laughs> have to check if you're sensitive to share. Yeah, I know Filipino Muslims now who are Masons. Oh, oh wow. wow. So it is. So it's really quite wise. But I mean, but because you... Philippines is a big thing. Yeah. Just now of mm. air also, you kind of mentioned that in the past, yes, right? It was a lot more closed off. Mm. Talking about it openly wasn't as... People didn't talk about it as yeah, openly in the, past, it. in the past. Now it feels like, open, you know, it's, very it's more open. open. So, I mean, is it kind of like a loosening? Like people are more... Maybe so. You could it, be right about that. And what's it? Another thing, what is beautiful about Freemasonry yep. is you must understand that as a Mason, mm-hmm. first of all, I must keep the United Grand Lodge certificate with me, copy. Mm-hmm. If I'm traveling, all I need to do is get a letter from my brother secretary, we call him, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. that I'm a Mason of good standing. That means I paid this year's dues. Okay. Right. Uh-huh. So, anywhere in the world, any meeting of Freemasons, I can go. I went to Tanzania, I went to a meeting. Mm. And that particular meeting, uh-huh. half of these fellows are all Muslims. Really? Oh, yeah. In Tanzania? Some of them are community fellows. Uh-huh. They enjoy it because why? It's just like that. So, like, so happens I'll be in Bangkok uh-huh. next week. But I'm, initially, it was, I was supposed to go for this mediation training. Uh-huh. Yeah, right. And these bloody jokers suddenly changed the dates. So I, I got fed up. They're refunding me back. Okay. It's about close to 900 US, you know. Uh-huh. They're refunding back the Tark fellows. 
But since I've already got a ticket, suppose I've gone for seven days. Mm. Right. So if I ask for refund, I'll get $90. Oh. <laughs> so what I've decided, I'm still flying to Bangkok, but I'm coming back a few days earlier. Uh -huh. from the, you know. But on the day I'm coming back, there's a meeting, so I can't attend. Mm. Because I'm flying back that day. Otherwise, I've attended a meeting. Right. It's in another English lodge, oh. but in Bangkok. Ah. And I tell you, you see, you'll be surprised. And the camaraderie, the fellowship, and the friendship that you have, I mean, you know, once you're as a, with together with brothers, it's amazing. Mm -hmm. I especially enjoy going for Freemasons meetings of lodges in Malaysia. Oh, well, I feel like Raman can resonate with Some or another, the Malaysians are very hospitable, that's number okay. one. Mm -hmm. And the hospitality and fellowship mm. is really great in East Malaysia. How's the food? East Malaysia, okay. The food is fantastic. <laughs> No, the East Malaysians, yeah. some or another from day one, well, uh -huh. even when I was in road three years to attend their, you know, those district conferences and assemblies, East Malaysians are always very big hearted, mm. very open, you know? Interesting. So if if I was a Mason in Singapore, yeah. I can go to any lodge, any anywhere in the world. Mm. Because why? It is like you have to you see, very simple. By chance, I was at a conference last year. Mm. And this guy from Nigeria, are you talking, talking? He still says, this, Are you on the square, brother? He says, I am. Mm. Okay. How now does I it even explain come to you what you mean by on the square. Mm. If you go into our temple, you will see the entire thing is like as if it's like a checkers board. You know, it's a checkers board. Yes, yeah. Yes, yeah, you yeah. know, we call it dumb when we use a yes, yes. I don't know why they call it dumb, do you ever? Yeah. So it's called checkers, right? Black. Yes, white, right? yes. It's a square. There's a reason for this. Uh -huh. Because whether you square the lodge, half square the lodge, all these are other concepts. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So it's a, the things are all squares. Okay. Not but, rectangle, uh, squares. Uh, uh. Okay. Mm. How did that conversation come up? Like with the Nigerian person you're talking about, right? Like I don't how... know how it came up, but he just sort of says, he says, are you in the square, brother? Mm. He says, I am. Wow. Mm. That's... So, you know, it's like a friendship, man. Uh, then, then straight away, you know, the handshake. Like. Instantly got connection wow. already. Right? They're all both in the same... I mean, I don't uh, have to, but you know, just... Yeah, ah. What sort of things are discussed in meetings? Oh, no, they, we call it... Okay, if there is no ritual, mm. then we just open, close the lodge, we open, we, we go through the minutes of the last meeting, treasurer's report, almoner's report, <laughs> almoner is supposed <laughs> to take care of, like if any brother is sick, mm. family member, if something happened, all reported in open lodge. Mm. Wow. Oh. Treasurer's report, uh, charities towards support because you collect money and all that. Oh, right, right. Every time we go for a meeting also we give, huh? mm. something, you know. If you want to give, give. Can be one dollar, can be whatever. What, because you're not supposed, nobody's supposed to see. I'm right, right. Mm. Uh, this is from you. Okay. You know, mm. From your heart. So basically, usually, if there is something that's like, uh, you know, like say there's uh, what is called a, re uh, a working to be done. We mm. call it a working. Whether it's first degree, second degree, third degree, mm. then it's all planned. The rituals are all planned already. Mm, then the DOC director of ceremonies will assign. The master has of course got to do a certain thing. Then the, this particular piece, so and so do. This particular piece, so and so do. Mm. You know, there are different pieces for different ceremonies. Right. Mm. Pieces, huh? Uh -huh. And we are supposed to learn by heart, huh? Wow. We don't read, huh? Oh, oh. Uh, Some people are fantastic. There's one thing called a charge. Mm. Uh -huh. Very few people can do it, but some people would perfect. Uh -huh. I am useless as far as the rituals are concerned. Uh, I'm not a good ritualist. Right. I'm a good administrator as far as my lodge is concerned. I mean, we don't do it my year, but there are some people who are just fantastic ritualists. Lee Tao Ket, mm. and he's got a commanding voice. Mm. It right. makes a lot of difference. Yeah. So it's very so, ceremonial and uh, yeah. very pomp oh. yeah. kind of a uh, thing. Eh? Is this like, you know, <clears throat> they, they, they say that universities always have... Um, or the fraternities. What? Yeah. Fraternities. Yeah. Yeah. So fraternities and sororities. Yeah. I've never heard of that. It's like, uh, you know, it's like a frat house. Like a frat house. You know, you go and then you get invited to join. They want the US ones. Mm. Like. Yeah, yeah, no. Even in England. Secret I mean, societies. Yeah, I mean, I'm You're using... talking about societies, like maybe historical yeah, no, not society. Secret, or... Not secret, not secret. No, no. Some, societies. some of them are secret, not because they're illegal or anything like that. Then what? They're but doing something funny? They operate under a, a, a certain air of mystery. Like it's not 
op- you don't apply. I, you well, I don't know because I've not been to those universities. So I don't right, know. Right. Mm. I mean, exclusive, like, exclusive exclusivity. Like, yeah. Yeah. I see. There is a strong sense of exclusivity about it. Oh, exclusivity, of course. We feel so. Mm. We're not going to deny that fact. Okay. Mm. I'm not going to deny that fact. Yes. It's a source of But pride. But that doesn't right? mean yes. that we are a secret society. I come back to the point. Uh, yeah, yeah, no, yeah, no. Yeah, okay. So don't don't take that um that label as something that's offensive. It doesn't have to be a bad thing. A secret society can be a good thing. No. You see, the word secret society does impute something negative. Okay. Oh. okay so I, I think I, that has... No, no. I'm not offended. Don't worry. Uh, uh. I just said I want to... <laughs> Dispel. Dispel yeah, that yeah. totally. Mm. Yeah, thanks for the word. And the misconception, if anyone is having that, it should be totally chucked out of their minds. Mm. We are dead. You see, when you think about what secret society, you're talking about, you know, what we had. I mean, maybe there are still, you know. Mm. Yeah. We know of gangs, right? There are Indian gangs and Malay gangs and right, Chinese right, gangs. Right. Mm. But the way now they're operating is so low profile mm. because during... I mean, PAP in that sense has done a good job in that yeah. sense. La. You know, that they made sure that. But despite that, of course, they're still going on, right? The uh, gangland clashes, we know what. I mean, mm. yeah. But it's like really, those things are so common. Yeah, hey, yeah. I live in a place called, I was born in Juchero, not Kandang uh-huh. Kerbau. Uh-huh. My elder brother has passed away. Uh-huh. was also a gang member. It is. Oh, that's oh. why I can tell you, I can walk three in the morning along Juchero. Uh-huh. The buggers are sitting in the coffee shop. They look at me, you know, and they just look back. But they know. Mm. I'm one of them. I'm mm. a Juchet boy. They won't touch me. Anybody else would have got whacked. Right. Why are you coming at three in the morning walking in Juchet? Oh, no. oh, Who do you think you are? Mm. Oh, wow. But it's a fact. That's how it is. But th- those were the days was like that. Those, yeah, like, those days. Like, yeah. mm. I'm talking the, about the 60s the, and 70s. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Mm. <laughs> I'm not afraid to walk because they know me. Mm. I see. That's, <clears> that's intense. Intense. Uh, yeah. Thank you so much for this session. This yeah. has been really eye-opening. Yeah, for those of you who are tuning in right now and also yeah. liking this content, don't forget to share. I'm intrigued. Yes. Yes. So, Raman, are you going to... Ju- <laughs> <laughs> no, actually, because like you were saying, right? Actually, yeah. the, the building is... Is there? Can, okay, it's not like the building is. is can we is visit? Hidden. Can the three of us visit? Can Anytime, visit. let me know the date and time. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But there must not be a meeting, so yes. I can't bring you all in. Okay. Oh. Let me know. I'll have to check, and then outsiders cannot watch the. But definitely the, not this month. Right. Oh. October lah. Okay, uh, let's Outsiders do this. cannot watch uh, if there's like any uh, Ritual. rituals going on. Outsiders no, cannot. No, you can't. Uh, cannot uh, yeah, so we, see, right now I'm known as a Tyler. Mm. Right. I have to, Tyler is to make sure that we keep covens, covens, uh, and intruders out. Damn. Uh, okay. And we're armed with a sword. Oh, <laughs> oh is it? Okay. <laughs> I think you intruder, bro. I think Za and me will get along. <laughs> You definitely intruder. You communist. What is this? Yeah. I'm Maybe not, by the way, I'm not. Don't say that. Huh? Uh, why? Because that is a bad word. <laughs> communist got all kinds of, of uh, baggage. You know. are, we, are we on the air still? Yeah, or are we on the air? No, no. We can be on the air and tell you something else. Uh, okay, 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 thank you. Uh, we'll be taking a short break, short break right now with our sponsors from the Bravo Realtors. Don't go away. You're listening to Plan B Podcast. The opinions expressed and shared on this podcast are of our own. Welcome to PlanB.sg. Stop it!